Hey YouTube, so it's the 29th of April and we're getting a snow shower. Hey YouTube, I thought you might want to see this. The road that we normally go on to get back and forth to, um, to our property, uh, the bridge is out and they're building a new bridge there. It's not a big thing, it's only a small bridge but this is the road we have to take now to get back home so it's not exactly the safest road in the world because if you roll over or pull off the edge of the road in spots like this right here you know you like roll over ten times till you come to a stop but you know, you see, I, we've seen a lot of wildlife along here turkey especially couple deer no bear yet on this road but it's actually a nice scenic ride of course it's about seven miles out of our way which it's not a big deal but um, it's, it's pretty nice sorry about that the battery went dead yeah all the way down in there I don't know if you can see the stream I'm up here to see it a little further up, but there's a stream down there between the two valleys here. It's pretty nice. A lot of hemlock in this area right here. The hemlock are the small needles, thick. And then uh, as you get up here a little higher, there's some white and red pine. I think you can see the stream down there now. You can also see that the snow we had last night is gone already. It's only about uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, see, I. Right here, I mean, this is ridiculous. You drive off the edge of this, and you're you're pretty much done for. You know, level is like that, so that's a probably a good 40, 50 feet down. So as we work our way up the mountain, then uh, there's some hemlock inter intermixed with white pine, and then when you get like that's a big white pine there you're looking at in the distance. Then as you get towards the top, there's red pine. And this is a red pine right here. That, that one right there. But, um, I really enjoy looking at this stuff. This looks like a cherry to me. Yeah, it's a cherry tree. Last year a tractor trailer for one of the gas well guys decided he'd come up this road and he ended up with the tires over the side of the thing on the back of the trailer because he couldn't make the turn. Alright, so here we're coming up to some red pine. You see how this the branches on this red pine here are like are pretty well cleaned off, there's no live growth on them. That's uh, because red pine are what they call self-pruning. There's more of them up the, up the road a little bit. Right there, there's a stand of them. Right here. These are 
the flitches from the pine. The thing about uh, pine is a lot of people say you shouldn't burn it in your stove and stuff like that. <clears throat> Some of the manufacturers of stoves even say you shouldn't use pine. However, pine burns hot and even though it may be a little wet because of all the sap in it, I find that uh, by the season, like, let's see, we got, we're in spring kind of, we got summer and then fall. By the time fall comes around, um, this stuff will be just right to uh, use the start fires. So what happens is I kind of disperse it throughout the pile. Now today, whatever I have here, there's there's hickory mixed in with that pine, so that'll be good when I start splitting that. The stuff that's in the bucket here right now is all white pine. But the one thing good about this stuff is it splits easy, pretty easy, unless you hit a big knot. Um, and uh, it's good for kindling. So that's what I use it for. Uh, this stuff that's here, the place I'm putting it, by the time I get to the end of winter next year, I'll be down to this. And what's nice about having the pine near the end of winter is that you're not starting a fire like every day. Some you'll, you know, when you get into April, like we've had some days. Uh, just the other day it was 75 degrees. Today it's in the 40s. But uh, the thing is, is um, because I'm not needing to fire every day come spring, it works out pretty good for starting a quick fire in the stove and then just having it burn for a couple of hours. Enough to take the chill out of the garage. That's basically, you know, what happens in the spring and in the early fall. Originally I used this thing to, uh, when I was building the house, I built this ramp so that I could back in here and unload generators, unload the four-wheeler or the lawnmower or whatever before I moved here. Now I barely use it, so uh, that's why I pop, pile my wood here. But I really would like to build something soon to... Uh, stack the firewood in a little better than this, something with a roof over it. I have a little shed that's up in a tree, like a tree house, and what I'd like to do is uh, pick that up with the backhoe. It's about the height that my backhoe loader will reach, so it's not so high that I couldn't reach it. And put a strap around it and get it off the tree. I had built it for the kids, so this way here I could maybe use that to store some firewood or something, or even some other tools if it's not big enough for firewood.
boy, after sitting around all winter, my back is sore already. But this helps you to get in shape. Right here, why? One thing about the flitches, it's starting to get warm now. One thing about the flitches is that uh, when you cut a tree, especially the way I do it, by getting to the cant, you figure you got four flitches for every log. So right now there's about 150 logs on the property. So, you know, four times that, you're looking at a lot of flitches. So you gotta do something with them unless you're gonna just pile them up and make a mess. So I just cut them up like firewood and stack it up. Cause everything burns as far as I'm concerned is wood.
Okay, I'm on my way. Thank you. Well, the boss is calling me for lunch. So I'm gonna go get lunch. I'll be back later. Well, guys, I'm back from lunch. Um, I want to talk about something that's pretty much totally different than what I usually talk about, but you guys who know my channel, um, sometimes I talk about anything. So, what I want to talk about is, I don't know if I've ever said this before, but uh, I'm a diabetic, which means I have diabetes, and I've had it since... Or I was at least, when I found out I had it, it was in 1992. So, obviously, I've had diabetes for quite a few years. Um, I think it's, what would that be, 90, uh, 1992, uh, 2022 would be 30 years, so it's 28 some, 20 some years. Whatever, you can do the math. I don't have a pencil. <clears throat> anyway, I've had diabetes for quite a while. And during the winter time, when I'm not doing any real work, um, sometimes my diabetes is hard to control. And I just want to share with maybe some of you who have the same problem or are having it now that um, I tried this new medicine that my doctor gave me and I, uh, not right now because I don't have it handy but I'll show you the medicine and I'll show you the name of it. I think it's called Ozempic if I'm not mistaken but I'll show it to you. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> This stuff has made a major change in my diet, in the controlling of my diabetes. Now, I'm not a doctor, and I certainly don't want somebody to try anything on my word, because I don't know. I'm just saying that three weeks ago, um, I was using 40 units you know what a, if you're a diabetic you know what a unit is on your needle I was using 40 units of insulin uh, four times a day which is a lot of insulin and the doctor got to the point where he said to me that he just can't keep letting me use this insulin like that now even with 40 units a day my blood sugar still was not down uh, very often below 200, which is supposed to be between 90 and 120, they say, somewhere in there. Um, but three weeks ago, I went to the doctor, and he told me to start taking this stuff. And what it is, it's, it's an injection that you take once a week. Now, I thought to myself, once a week, what good is that going to do? Well, I'll tell you what, did a little bit of reading about it, and apparently this stuff was, I think it was invented in somewhere by the Danish. The, the Danes live in Finland. Anyway, the Danish come up with it, and originally... It was used to lose weight. It was made for obesity. That's what it was made for. In, in uh, the U.S., a lot of us have that problem. I'm, I'm overweight. And uh, I never really cared about losing weight, but it would be nice to lose weight. But here's the thing. They also found out that it helps people with diabetes. Uh... So, I started taking this, like I say, last, uh, three weeks ago, and I 
and I take a shot every Monday. And to be, uh, Sally's one of these where she wants medicine taken on time, so it's Monday at freaking 2.30. Couldn't be at lunch when I'm already sitting. But anyway, at 2.30 on a Monday, and it's not quite that yet, I take one shot of this, a half of a milligram, I think it is. Um, it has worked wonders. Now, the side effects were that I was getting a little nauseous, but it wasn't the kind of nauseous where you would throw up. It was the kind of nauseous where you would, you know, if you were sitting not doing anything, it's like, why is my stomach bothering me? But if you did something, you know, went out and did something, it really didn't bother you. So, I hung in there for the first week, and then uh, I was sick almost every day with this uh, stomach, you know, problem the first time I took it. So I took it on a Monday. I was sick all the way up until Friday, but then on the weekend, I felt pretty good. So I, um, I figured, okay, this isn't too bad. So Sally and I were talking about it, and I also was talking to my one daughter, and she says to me that sometimes... You know, sometimes you got to take medicine a little bit and the symptoms will go away, the uh, side effects. So anyway, um, that was that was right after the first week. So I figured, okay, I, I, I says to her, my daughter, do you think that maybe I should reduce the amount? Because, you know, you can either, the needle's set up to give you either a half of a milligram or a quarter, I think, of a milligram, I think. Now, I'm not positive of that measurements <laughs> because you know again I'm not a doctor but anyway uh, she says to me well if you can stand it you know keep taking what the doctor originally prescribed for you so I did that and on the second week of taking this medicine um, I was only sick for uh, one one morning I wasn't feeling you know, my stomach was bothering me. But, the rest of the week, I felt pretty good. In fact, by the weekend, I was feeling really good. Better than I felt in years. Because, for two weeks, for, for that first week, my blood sugar plummeted from being 200 in the morning to being like 108, 110. That's some of the readings. 95. Which was like amazing. So after a whole week of keeping my blood sugar below 200, because sometimes it would go up in the afternoon, amazingly, I felt a whole lot better. Uh, like, just better. I don't know. I felt like, I can't say that I had a whole lot more energy, because I had pretty much energy to begin with, but I just felt better. I felt, you know, not so sore. My feet didn't bother me as much. A lot of little little things that I started noticing, and I was happy for that. So then the third week came of, of taking it, and uh, on the third week when I took it, again, probably I took it on a Monday, and probably I think Wednesday morning I was a little bit sick, but it only lasted for like a, just just to get to. once I ate breakfast which I didn't feel like eating, but I ate anyway. Um, so I ate breakfast, and by noontime, it was gone. So today I was telling, so anyway, I was putting all this information on Excel in a spreadsheet with four different graphs to really be able to, to see what was going on. And uh, from what I see, it seems to be working. And I thought to myself, you know, hey, if there's anybody else out there who has this, maybe, maybe this can help them. The other thing I noticed um, with it is it affected my vision a very, very small amount. Uh, so, and and what it did was normally even with diabetes, I have I have good eyes. I can see. I mean, I can read the clock, the thermometers and stuff that I have outside here. Sometimes when other people can't read them, but I can read them. 
And um, what happened was I noticed that when I was reading a book, uh, I was reading a book about Graydon Wood the other day, and when I was reading it, my eyes were getting blurry. Now, I don't know if it's because I was tired and it was the end of the day, but my eyes were getting a little blurry, and then, you know, I noticed a second time I was reading, they were a little bit blurry, only reading. I, I have no problem driving, none, none of that, you know, like right now I can see good and all, but I was just, you know, you, you, you could notice that when I was reading it was bothering me, but I don't know for sure what's going to happen with that. That, that may, may fix itself, I'm, I'm not positive, because it's, it's not very bad. So anyway, I just wanted to share that, maybe that will help somebody. And like I say, by the end of the video here, I'll put up the name of the stuff. Not because I want you to watch the video, but because I'm not going back in the house right now. You know, there's nothing like uh, having good health and feeling good. Diabetes is a real pain in the butt because it's got so many different things that it can do to you. And everybody's different. That's the worst thing about it. You know, it's not like something, you know, physical where you cut your finger and you know you need a Band-Aid. With diabetes, the only thing I guess they really know is you got to keep your blood sugar down why it does what it does like one thing that i don't know and i can't figure this out like this morning my blood sugar was 107 so i ate breakfast which was one egg and one strip of bacon for some reason when i just went in and i ate nothing else and i mean you saw i don't know if you if i videotaped it but i was saw running the chainsaw moving logs, chopping firewood, and I went in to check myself right before lunch, and it's uh, 145. I don't get that. I don't understand why did it go up so much, you know, from the egg and the, I mean, I'm not eating any bread or any potatoes or none of that stuff. Just a simple over easy egg with two pieces of bacon. So... I'm not sure why it goes up. And when Sally also has diabetes, and she just checked hers at lunchtime, and hers did the exact same thing. <clears throat> she had her certain reading in the morning, and she checks it at lunch, and without eating a thing, the sucker goes up on you. And I'm past, I'm, I'm way past the point where, you know, I have to have something to eat only because I, I think I'm hungry. I don't really, I only eat, you know, my regular meals and I eat a little something before I go to bed because if I don't, I'll wake up and want something. But Sally has a little bit of a problem with controlling hers because she likes to eat and she'll, because she's almost always in the kitchen, you know, it's easy to grab this or grab that. And you don't realize that even a little thing. Like the other day we went out, my blood sugar was real good. Hers was good. And while she was in the store, there was a Dunkin' Donut next to the place. And I just had to have one of them French crullers. So I went over there. I bought a cup of coffee for the both of us. I got us two donuts. And I ate that. And that freaking donut goofed my blood sugar up for three meals. It was 50 points higher than it was at any time during the previous week. So I mean it just tells you don't eat freaking donuts. So I never really realized what how, what the effect would be. I knew it went up but I never really cared to look at it to see how much. And it's hard you know uh, somebody wants to talk to you. A lot of times I'll meet people over at Dunkin Donuts and, and you know because it's a a meeting place in town here. So we, we go over there. Okay, I'm at Dunkin' Donuts. 
You know, it's kind of tough when everybody's eating a freaking donut and you're allowed to have coffee, period. But you got to be able to, to do that. Same thing like at Easter time. Uh, my goodness, we, we celebrate Easter in a big way. All kinds of homemade cooked food and, you know, now it's bare bones. We don't even invite anybody over because we're, we're cooking such bare bones that in order for us to stay healthy, we can't be having a big get-together. Now since the cutting season started, and with me chopping wood and stuff, my insulin may change. I might have to change how much I take. And that's another reason why you got to keep track of it and try and remember what you ate during the day so that you can teach yourself, you know, what you can eat and what you can't. What I'm finding is it's better to eat a piece of chocolate, pure chocolate, you know, yay big, than it is to eat like a half a donut. Because it takes a lot less time for the chocolate to go through your system than it does for the freaking donut. That's for me now, like I say. I'm not a doctor. I am only telling you about what happened with me. And if it can help somebody, you know, talk to your doctor. He's the one that should be able to help you with this. But there's definitely no magic cure. Although, what this medicine does, from what I understand, and, and I, you know, I'm not a doctor, so don't take this. The, the way I understand it is, it kind of excites your... Whatever in you absorbs blood sugar and uses for energy that doesn't seem to work when you're a diabetic so this medicine supposedly excites that and makes you do what well, I don't know how like again I'm not really up on it but it makes you do makes your body do what it needs to to try and help curb that whatever you have left in you it's not a cure for diabetes although I, I personally I believe they have cures they just won't tell us so we keep buying all that crap you need, testing needles and stuff. But anyway, I'm just saying that's what I read that it does. It helps to make your body do the things that it has to do to get rid of the sugar, I suppose. to chop all of that up there yet. I don't know if I'm going to get it done today, but they're calling for rain all week. But the temperatures are supposed to warm up, so we shouldn't get any snow. 
luckily my apple blossoms are not out yet, so I'll still get apples as long as the blossoms don't get frost on them. This is what you ought to be doing. <sighs> All right, guys, so this is what I was talking about out there. That's the name of it. It's a pen. You can either give yourself a quarter of a milligram, I believe it is. And like I say, I'm not a doctor, but you might want to talk to your doctor about this stuff if you have diabetes. It might be able to help you, especially if you're overweight, which most diabetics are, I guess. And I'm guessing at that. Have a good one.